Jesus' name. We pray that the things we are forgetting, you remind us. And the things we are getting to unconsciously, which we should not get to, O oh Lord, get us out of them in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that you give us sharp eyesight, as well as insight, so we'll see what you want us to see. We'll be all great and wonderful things in your world tonight, and it will transform our lives. Make us better on the job, in the ministry you have given to every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. God bless you. We're looking at uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man, if any woman, if anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him, not in her. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but of the world. And the world passes away, and the loss thereof. But she that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And I pray you'll be one of those people in Jesus' name. As we look at the word of God, there are things that Christians are forgetting. The things that ministers are forgetting. The things that those who call themselves or those of us that say we're children of God. The things we're forgetting that the Spirit of God will want to remind us of. As born again Christians, as we are being called into the salvation of the Lord, and we have the commission of the Lord himself, there's a way we can describe that just one, one way. That we are to be like Christ. That he is a Christian. He is like Christ. Put it this way. If you are going to write the word Christian. You have to write the word Christ first. And if you look at the Christian. And you separate the Christian from the I-A-N. That means if you remove that Christ the Savior, Christ, the Lord, Christ, a substitute, Christ, a redeemer, and Christ, the one that transforms our lives. If you remove that Christ, all that remains is I, A, N. That means I am nothing. Without Christ, if Christ does not come into your heart, into your life, and live in you, and dwell in you, and transform you, and be the very center, and the very pivot, and the very focus of your life, without Christ, you are nothing. Without the salvation of Christ, I'm nothing. Without the redemption of Christ, I'm nothing. Without the transforming power of Christ, I'm nothing. Without the grace of Christ in my life, it says, Without Christ, all that remains in your life will be I, A, N. Tell me out aloud. I'm nothing. That means we are called to be like Christ. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. And you see over here, it says, love not the world. None of the things that are in the world. You come to Christ and it takes away from you that sin that wants to love the world. When we're talking of loving the world, you understand? It's not talking about the people. It's talking about the amusements in the world, the appearance of the world, the allurements in the world, the abominations in the world. It's talking about the attractions in the world. It's talking about the things that the worldly people do, the things that those who know, don't know Christ, the things they do that you don't find in Christ. And so he calls you and he calls me and he says, I've changed your life. I've redeemed your life. I've saved you. I've redeemed you. I've transformed you. Be like me. That's all. Everything you want to say about the Christian life, 
everything you want to describe about the Christian life, it says, that's Christ. The way he spoke, be like him. The way he lived, be like him. And the way he evangelized, be like him. The way he preached, be like him. Everything he did, be like him. And whatever you cannot find in him, and whatever he will not do, wherever he will not go, there you will not go. Be like Christ, nothing else, nothing more, nothing less. It means then that you want to hate what he hates. He hates sin, you hate sin. And you want to seek and shelter the people he sought and sheltered. You want to seek the lost. It means that you want to resist temptation like you resisted temptation. You want to get sinners converted and sinners to come to the Lord like he did. What he concentrated on, what he focused on, and what he planted his life on. That's what we want to concentrate on. That means he calls you, he calls me, he calls us. And he says, be like Christ. Love not the world because he loved not the world. Now that the things that are in the world, because he loved neither the things that are in the world. Because if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And he says, for all things that are in the world. You remember, you're a Bible reader and you're a Christian, that the devil came and he showed him all the glories of the kingdoms of the world. And he said, bow down to me, just bend a little and worship me, and I'll give you all this. He resisted that temptation, and the Lord is calling upon us, be like him, live like him, reject what he rejected, and refuse what he refused, and resist what he resisted, and then you'll be a real Christian. You'll be showing the mark, you'll be showing the evidence, you belong to Christ. Thank God I belong to Christ. He converted sinners, you'll convert sinners. He sought for those people and cured the sick. That's what you will do as well. He cast out evil spirits. That's what you like to do as well. You want to be in action, in attitude, in performance, in everything he did. You want to be like him. And that's the whole of Christianity. And I will say again, nothing more, nothing less. Tell me the rest nothing else. That's very important that as you look at your life, you wake up today and you say, what am I going to do today? How am I going to live today? What am I going to be today? I look at Christ and I like Christ to be in front of me and as it's going on, I follow after and I say, wherever he will not go, I will not go. Whatever he will not do, I will not do. And the kind of joke he will not cast, I will not cast. And the kind of jesting he will not have, I will not have. And the kind of appearance will not have, I will not have, just to be like Christ every time. And I pray that the grace to be like Christ, to fully be like Christ, to entirely be like Christ, to totally be like Christ, the Lord will give to all of us in Jesus' name. And I said nothing more. That means then our thoughts, nothing more than his thoughts, our attitude, nothing more than his attitude, our disposition, nothing more than his disposition, and then our utterances, nothing more than his utterances. Everything we think about is just like Christ, nothing more. And then nothing less, we cannot say, well, he is Christ, and because he is Christ, he's up there, and I am down there. No, he calls you to be like him. And he calls you to be full of Christ. And therefore, there should be nothing less. There is no excuse. There will be no excuses to have a lower standard. Because he has left us an example that we should follow and fully, completely, entirely follow the standard he has left. And then, nothing else. There's no other thing you are called to do. You cannot say, well, Jesus didn't do it this way. I'm going to try and do something. You cannot improve on what Christ has done. Whatever he has done, that's what you want to do. That's why you want to look at your life and say, how did he live? What did he give his life for? What did he concentrate his life on? And you want to concentrate on that. Tonight I'm talking to you on compelling Christ likeness amidst worldly amusements. Worldly amusements surround us, worldly allurements surround us. 
what the attractions surround us, what the appearance surround us, what the ambition surrounds us, what the aspiration surrounds us, and then in the midst of all that, here I stand, and I want, I'm compelled to be like Christ in the midst of it all. You think about the things you see in the street, the things you see in your places of work, and the things you see anywhere, and all these things surround you, and then you say, I have a calling. I have a commission. I'm, I'm compelled to be like Christ, compelling Christ-likeness amidst worldly amusements. We're looking at uh, verse 2 of that uh, passage I just read now that says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not him. Look at verse 2. And he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of, tell me, the whole world. That means then, that means that it's not, it's not telling us to run away from the world. It's not telling us to be afraid of those things in the world. It's not saying we should be like a hermit and then go and hide ourselves somewhere. It says, in the propitiation of the sins of the world, he came so that, behold, the Lamb of God that taketh away, tell me, the sins of the world. He came to sacrifice. He came to give his life. He came to die so that we might be saved. And we're to be like Christ. And we're compelled to be like Christ. Anything we do, we don't love the world on the, on the one hand, but then we love the people of the world. And we want to be instruments and tools for their salvation on the other hand. We're looking at uh, First John chapter 3, and I'm reading from verse 1. It says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. I'm a child of God. I said I'm a child of God. Are you sure? The way you are talking, I cannot see that you are a child of God. Thank God I am. I say thank God I am. It says we are the children of God, the sons of God. Therefore, the world... What, does, what do they do? They, it knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Do you see the comparison? The world knoweth us not, because, because of what? Because it knew him not. That is, we live like Christ. We position ourselves like Christ. We appear like Christ. Everything we do is like Christ. And because of that, they didn't love him, therefore they don't love us. They are not giving in to us because they didn't give in to him. It says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God. When are we the sons of God? Now, at this time, in this present world, are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be. But we know, we know that when it shall appear, we shall, tell me, be like him, for we shall see him as he is. You see, as he's talking about him, he's talking about us. He says, well, be like him. And if you're going to be like him, there has to be a transformation at this time. There has to be a change at this time that it comes in your heart. It lives inside your heart. Your life is totally different. And then you are a reflection of the Lord Jesus Christ yourself. And that reflection, as the people of the world, they look at you, they look at Christ, they can see the reflection because you are like him. And when he comes, when he appears, he says, we'll be like him just as he is. Look at verse 3. And every man, how many people? I said how many people? You know, there are people that will say eh, that's their own standard, that's their own way, that's what they are saying But me. I cannot do like that. You see my background. You see where I'm coming from. You see my education. You see my status. You see the way I am. How can people come to my house and they will not see this? How can people look at me and they will not have this? It does not show where I'm walking. Let it show where Christ has done a great work, a great work of transformation. It says that every man how many people again? Every man that has this hope in him purifies himself. Tell me, 
and see his peer. Do you see the comparison? Every time we read about Christ, we read about the Christian. Every time we're looking at Christ, who has saved us, who has redeemed us, who has changed our lives, we're looking at the Christian too, and he's saying that we are purified, even as he has been purified. Look at chapter 4. Chapter 4, 1 John. And here I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 9. Look at uh, 1 John chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 9. It says in verse 9, it says, This word of God is telling us what Christ has done for us. And because of what he has done for us, it's also telling us what we then look like. Are you there? Yeah. Tell me the first verse if you are there. In this was manifested the love of God. It says toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. It's a different life. It's a new life. It's a transformed life. It's a changed life. It's a holy life. It's a sanctified life. He came and he died for us and see what he has done. He sacrificed, he shed his blood and that blood will cleanse us and wash us and then we will be like him. But look at verse 17. It says, herein is our love made perfect. He's talking about us Christians. He's talking about me there. I said he's talking about me there. Herein is our love made perfect that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. Because, tell me, tell me out aloud, as he is, so are we. You see what he's telling us? It says there should be no difference at all. As he is, even now, with the glory of his life, with the beauty of his life, with the holiness of his life, with the righteousness in his life, as he is, so are we. That that then tells us the demonstration of the life of the real Christian, the one that really knows the Lord. That's why we say God has called us, has called the Christians to be like Christ. And we say once again, nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. That is who we are, and that is what we're going to be in Jesus' name. Uh, we're not here to build another ba Babel, uh, Tower of Babel. We're not here to build Babylon. You see, when Christ came here, Christ did not get himself, himself involved in building Tower of Babel or building another Babylon or building the Roman Empire. He said he came to build the church. That was a central attraction and central affection. And that is going to be ours also in Jesus' name. We're going to do what he did. We're going to live the way he lived. And everything is going to be according to the pattern of his life in Jesus' name. You will be like him. You will live like him. You'll pray like him. You'll evangelize like him. You will hate what he hates. And you will love what he loves. And as you do that, the Lord will see the reflection of Christ in you. And you'll be a real, real child of God, son of God, daughter of God, servant of God in Jesus' name. Compelling Christ-likeness amidst worldly amusements. I'm looking at this under three perspectives. Number one, deliverance from the corruption of worldly amusement. Deliverance from the corruption of worldly amusement. As you look at worldly amusements, there's corruption there. There's pollution there. There's perversion there. The Satan behind it is the God of this world. And the Lord is saying, you come to Christ. And there's a deliverance. He delivers you from the corruption of worldly amusement. Number two. The distraction of total commitment to worldly advancement. 
You see, there are people, they say, praise the Lord, what lay, what lay uh, amusement is not my problem. How about what lay advancement? The people that are running the rat race in the world, they say they are Christians, they do not have any time to consecrate their life, consecrate their resources to what Christ died for, for the salvation of humanity. And it is a great distraction when somebody is totally, completely, entirely committed to what lay advancement advancement and you want to check your life today what are you giving your life to and what are you concentrating on what are you you know buying buy your time in your treasures in your money into maybe it is just worldly advancement but it's a great distraction and the lord will set us free from that in jesus name number three dedication to our commission without worldly ambition. Worldly ambition. There are some people, success, success, success. Success in what area? Is it in success building something that when Jesus Christ comes, everything will collapse and the fire will come and melt everything and destroy everything and then you are empty handed because what you have consecrated your life to and what you have given your life to is just the ambition, the ambition of Absalom, the ambition of the people of the world and the sin eventually will evaporate when Christ comes. And by the grace of God, you will have a dedication to your commission. The commission of Christ. What the Lord has called us for. Dedication to our commission without worldly ambition. Tell me number one. Deliverance from the corruption of worldly amusement. Brothers and sisters, this is a very serious matter. There are many Christians today that you cannot differentiate between them and the people of the world. Uh, they claim they are born again. They claim they are children of God. They claim they are been to Calvary. They claim they are washed in the blood of the Lamb. They claim they know the New Testament. They claim that they are born again. They are children of God. But when you look at them, the things they enjoy, the pleasures they run after and the things that attract them that seize their heart and the things that occupy their attention you'll be wondering okay if you say you know the lord where is the evidence and i pray that the lord will give every one of us total deliverance in jesus name look at galatians galatians chapter one and see what christ has done galatians chapter one i'm reading from verse three it says a grace be to you and the peace from god God the Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 4. Who gave himself? Who gave himself on Calvary? Who gave himself as a sacrifice? Who gave himself to die for you? Who gave himself to shed his blood for you? Who gave himself for, tell me, our sins that he might deliver us from the present evil world. Deliver us from the present evil world. He has come to deliver us. And I pray that every one of us will partake us and, uh, and you will enjoy that deliverance in Jesus name. And then it says it's according to the will of God our Father. There's deliverance there. There's total deliverance there and it delivers us from the corruption of the world. He delivers us from pollutions of the world. He delivers us from all the films and all the cinemas and all the six, all the nightclubs of the world. He delivers us completely from all the pleasures of the world because he grants us his own life, his own heart. He says, when I was in the world, this is how I live. When I was in the world, this is the way I went. When I was in the world, this is what I concentrated my life on. And now that you say you are a Christian, here is what to consecrate and to commit your life to you and it delivers us from the present evil world. I pray that these things will not be a problem in your life anymore in Jesus' name. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, it tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, what actually is the motivating factor and the motivating force and the driving force of the people of the world. Look at this in Ephesians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 1, and it says, and ye, you are sick quickened, who are dead in trespasses and sins. Then it says uh, that uh, where, where, 
wherewith it says uh, in time past when in, in time past ye walk according to the course of this world in time past before you became born again before you became a child of God you walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit that tell me now walkers in the children of disobedience you see all the fashions of the world who dictates them you see by the expression of the holy spirit no it is by inspiration of the spirit of the devil it says there's a spirit walking in the people of the world that will make them totally expose their nakedness and some of them can even go naked on the street and it doesn't bother them but here the lord is telling us that's what we were. We used to run after their fashion, after their shows, after their merriments, after their celebration or whatever. But he, now, he says now, things are different now. And thank God in my life, things are different now. I said in my family, things are different now. And anywhere you are walking, things are different with you in Jesus' name. And then he says, among whom also we all tell me, Arch, past tense, past tense, past tense. We arch our conversation. It says in time past, in the lust of our flesh, and it says uh, over here, fulfilling uh, the desires of the flesh and of the mind. And we were by nature, all past tense were by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. But God, a difference has come, a change has come. A transformation has come. But God, who is uh, what? Rich in what? That's the mercy that forgave us. That's the mercy that saved us. That's the mercy that brought us in. That's the mercy that brought us out of darkness and brought us into the light. It says, uh, but God, who is rich in mercy... For his great love, where we they loved us, even when we were past tense, past tense, we were dead in sins, he has quickened us together with Christ. By grace are you saved. I am saved by grace. I said I'm saved by grace. And has raised and has raised us up. Has raised us up together. And we're seated now where? In heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what the Lord has done for us. He's taking us away from all that pollution of the world. You see, Satan is a god of this world. And he has, uh, he has uh, perverted the religion of many people. And he has also uh, in, in kind of invented a lot of uh, terrible things like amusements. And uh, there is uh, all these things of the world in the look, in their entertainment. There's what is called the entertainment industry. And now many people, that's what they give their lives to. They say it's relaxation for them. They say it's a kind of, you know, to ease the tension of the world and then to relax and do this and do that. And yet it's invented by the devil so that their minds will be taken away from the things of the Lord. What their amusements are so varied and what their amusements are so numerous that to number them one by one, you cannot even do that. It's like emptying the ocean by drawers. But whatever they are, the very root, the Lord has supported from our heart. He has taken away from our lives. And the things I used to do, I do them no more. The places I used to go, I go there no more. The things I used to enjoy, I enjoy them no more. Because Christ has come into my heart. Has it come to your heart? Any change in your life there? If we came to your house, any, why are we going to see any change? And we say, this is a Christian house. Look at the city room. Look at the, you know, dining. And look at everyone. Open the fridge and see, this is, what, this is a Christian house. Am I talking about your house? Things are different now since Jesus came in. And I pray that that difference will continually be seen in your life in Jesus' name. Look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 3. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 3. It says, But fornication and all uncleanness. How many forms of uncleanness? All. All, of, all uncleanness. And then it goes on, or covetousness. Let it not be. 
name too many times. I said, name too many times. You know, some people, they say, well, that, that's my only, that's my only problem. Uh, worldly amusement, that's my only problem. Worldly entertainment, that's my only problem. And worldly enjoyment, that's my only problem. And then he says, let it not be once named among you as becomes. Who are you? Saints of God. Saints don't enjoy the same thing sinners enjoy. Am I right? But if you're still enjoying the same thing like they enjoy, you like to see and watch the same thing they see and watch, then you are not a saint. But thank God, the blood of Jesus cleanses you and it makes you a saint in Jesus' name. Neither filthiness, neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor gesturing, which are not convenient, but rather the giving of thanks. And then he tells us in verse 5, it says, For this ye know, that no monger, and no unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an, who is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. You see, there is no management. There is no patch, patch, patch. If you're a Christian, you're a Christian. If you're a believer, you're a believer. If you're saying to a saint, and he says, all the people that are involved in this sin, he says, don't be deceived, because they are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. In verse 6, let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things, what things? Fornication? What things? Uh, uncleanness, what things, covetousness, what things, all these worldly things. It says, because of these things, the wrath of God cometh upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. Be not therefore partakers with them. Let the change be so glaring and so clear. And let the difference be so clear and be so clear that you'll say that is a child of God. I pray God will affirm that in every one of our lives in Jesus' name. We're looking at Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Philippians chapter 2 verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ. You see, it's an internal problem. When somebody has, is drawn towards something, that's an internal problem. When somebody is concentrating on these uh, time-wasting uh, things, this is, is an internal problem. When, it, when your mind is changed, when your heart is changed, when your spirit is changed, when the in a propensity when all that turns around and when your heart becomes like the heart of Christ, your mind like the mind of Christ, everything will become totally different. That's why it says let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Now look at verse 15. In verse 15 it tells us that ye may be what? Blameless and what? Harmless. You know, when you think about the people of the world, they're not blameless. You think about the people of the world, they're not harmless. But it says that when the mind of Christ comes to you, when you're born again, when you're a child of God, and when you are living to make your life a reflection of the life of Jesus Christ, then it tells us that she may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God without, without, you know, sometimes the local pastor has to be calling you every time. How about this? How about this? Eh, I'm sorry. I didn't know. And then another time again, this, you come to church and they say, my sister, come on here. You're older than this. You, you're more mature than this. Look at what you put on. If your child wore this, what would you say? If, uh, you know, somebody that uh, said he's been in the church for 10 years, if he wore this, what would you say? He says, let your life be without rebuke. We're not calling you every time, calling you every time and saying, hi about this, hi about this. I believe and I pray that things will turn that change in Jesus' name. Without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom you shine as light lights in the world. I will shine. Your life continues to shine in Jesus' name. Hey, look at Second uh, Peter chapter 1. Second Peter chapter 1. I'm reading from verse 4. 
Second Peter chapter 1 verse 4. See what the Lord has done for us in verse 4. It says, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature. Look at this now. Having escaped, what? The corruption that is in the world through lost. You see, when you come to the Lord, he makes you to escape. Escape the corruption that is in the world. He looks at all the things around you and they're like corruption. They're like defilement. They're like abominations. And he says the grace of God has come to you now and the strength of the Lord has come to you now and the cleansing of the blood of Jesus has taken place in your heart and he makes you escape the corruption that is in the world through laws. Look at chapter 2 and I'm reading from verse 20. Chapter 2 verse 20 it says in verse 20 here it says for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if they are again entangled in. That's backsliding. If they are again entangled in. That's retrogression. They are going back to what they are left before. And they are going back to their vomit. It says if they are entangled again in those things then it says the latter end is worse than the beginning. That means that they are worse than even before they, came, they became converted. They are no more Christians. They are backsliders. And now they need restoration. Because it says it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known each to turn from the holy commandment which was given unto them, delivered unto them, but it is support unto them. According to the true proverb, the dog is, tell me, return to his own vomit and then the soul, the pig, the swine that was washed also returned to the wallowing in the mire again. I pray that will not be your Lord. Amen. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're reading from verse 27. It says, Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and the widows in the affliction and to keep himself, tell me, or spotted from the world so that the world will not defile your character will not pollute your character will not make you like them only like them in Jesus name chapter 4 James chapter 4 verse 4 James chapter 4 reading from verse 4 ye adulterers and adulteresses Know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whatsoever therefore, whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world, tell me, it's an enemy of God. I will not be an enemy of God. You will not be an enemy of God in Jesus' name. Point number two now. The destruction of total commitment to worldly advancement. The destruction of total commitment to worldly advancement. Today we are going to do something different. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? We are going to rise up. We are going to take what we have heard now to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up. Let's rise up.
let's call upon the Lord to really help us. We need to be delivered from what is going on around in the world so that we will not be part of it. If we are Christians, we should remain Christians. We should live like Christians. We should uh, uh, conduct ourselves like Christians, not, that, not like the people of the world. Let's pray that the Lord will assist us. All that we have had today, by the grace of God, we are going to obey. We must not forget that we should not be like the unbelievers. A Christian is different from an unbeliever. How different are you from the people of the world? If you are doing what they are doing, are you not the same? If you are enjoying what they are enjoying, are you not the same? Where is the, where is the difference? Something must show that you are a child of God. Look into your life. Look into your life. The people that you interact with, do they see you as a Christian? When you do what they do, when you enjoy what they enjoy, let's ask God to help us. We must be different from the people of the world. Let's pray. Let's pray that God will help us. Our life will be different. Our conduct will be different. Christ came to deliver us from the corruption that is in the world. And that uh, his purpose of coming must be realized fully. Worldly abusement brings corruption. Worldly entertainment brings corruption. Worldly fashions. The things that the people of the world produce, they don't produce for us. They produce for the people of the world. The home videos. Many of us will still get home and we spend hours watching the home videos. And we waste so much time and we learn so much evil. And our children are doing the same. We don't correct them. Let's pray that the Lord will help us. Every form of worldly amusement and engagement, the Lord will assist us to, over, to throw them overboard. The Christian must be a Christian indeed. Ask the Lord to help you. Your life must be different. You must shine as a light. When the unbelievers look at us, they should wonder why we are not doing like them. And when they see that we are not doing like them, they are going to ask questions. What is... What do you have in you? I want that thing. But when we are, we are the same thing, we, we uh, drink the same thing, we, we dress the same way, we compete with them with, on, in fashion, they will not see any difference. The Lord will deliver us. Let's open our mouth and pray. Our lives must be different now that we are Christians. Our lives must be different. Our recreation, whatever we use as a means of recreation, must be different from what the people of the world are using. How do the people in your compound where you live, how do they look at you? Do they even know you are a Christian? Do they see any difference in your life compared to their own? If we are true Christians, it will affect all our desires and practices. We will not be partakers with the unbelievers if we are true Christians. We will strive to be different from the world. In fact, we make concerted effort to be different. That what they are enjoying, we will not enjoy. What they are enjoying, we will not enjoy. Let's pray that God will help us and that mark of difference will be upon our lives. Open your mouth and pray. The Lord will help you. The people that know you, what do they know you as? Christ came to deliver us from this present evil world. From all the themes, from the videos, from the music, from the fashions, from the recreations of the world. He will deliver us if we call upon him. Actually, if our life is full of the word of God, there will be no space for those other things. If we spend time to read the Bible, and what time do we even have to engage in worldly amusements? A rich child of God, somebody, especially a worker, there's not enough time to read the Bible and pray and do other things we have to do. When do we have to, to watch uh, home videos? To engage, uh, to listen to worldly music? It doesn't, just fit in. it doesn't just fit in. Let's pray that God will help us. Things must be different now for all of us if we are true believers. 
things must be different. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. Things must be different now in your life. If you say you are a Christian, show it by the way you live. If you say you are a Christian, show it by the way you dress. If you say you are a Christian, show it by the way you walk. Show it by the things you do. Show it by, by, by the, uh, the appearance of your house. Show it by the conduct of your children. If you say you are a Christian, you must show it one way or the other. We are no longer nominal Christians. We are practicing Christians. And the things that ought not to be in our lives should not be found there. If we are true Christians, it will affect our desires, our practices, and we will not be partakers with the unbelievers. Do you see how people desire you love the things of the world? Something is wrong somewhere internally. If you still love the things of the world, something is wrong somewhere internally. You have an internal problem, and you will call upon God to help you solve that internal problem. It comes from the heart. You need to revisit Calvary for a change of your heart. When you are born again, if you are genuinely born again, you will hate sin, you will hate everything sinful. If you are genuinely born again, a rich child of God, and the work of conversion has been done in you, you cannot go back to the things of you. It's not, it's not possible. You don't enjoy it. You hate them. You hate them. That's an evidence that you are a child of God. A rich child of God does not, cannot enjoy the things that sinners are enjoying. It's not possible. Unless the person has uh, backslidden. Let's pray that God will put back that ability in us. God will put back that ability to stand out in us. How can a believer put on the, the music of a worldly musician and begin, to, and begin to enjoy it? Something has gone wrong. Something has gone wrong. But God can help us to retrace ourselves today. God can help us to retrace ourselves today. Yes, it is true that many Christians today are just like the people of the world. There is no difference. God will deliver such ones today. God will deliver you today if you will call upon Him. He will set you free. If you call upon him, he will set you free today and he will give you the grace and power to hate the things of the world. It comes naturally for anyone who is a child of God. You will love God and you will love the things of God. You will hate the devil and you will hate the things of the devil. It's logical. Let's pray. The Lord will help us. Our lives will show that we are Christians. And if we have internal heart problems, we will seek for solutions from the Almighty God tonight or this afternoon and He will repair our hearts. The Lord is coming very soon. The Lord is coming very soon. And we don't know when He will come. We need to be ready for the coming of the Lord. If you are still living in a worldly amusement and enjoyment, it, you can't make it. You can't because such people are not candidates of heaven. They are not. Pray that God will help you, and He will. The time we need to uh, to, to spend, uh, we want to we need to spend reading our Bibles. We should not use it for other amus for amusements. We don't ask Christians who have so much to do, so much to do. What time do we have to slot in a home video? And for two hours, three hours, we are watching. What? Where do we get that time? It means that we are not involved in the work of God. When there is so much work to be done, so much prayers to be prayed, many of us are not praying. And we need to pray for things to happen in the church and in our families. The time we invest in worldly amusement, let's invest it in, the, in, the, in prayer for, the, for, uh, for God to intervene and then move the church forward. We have things to do, we have so much to do, evangelism, follow-up, plannings to do, so many things that we can, we can engage our time in. The devil is using worldly amusements and entertainment to steal our time. Run us down spiritually and eventually take us out of the kingdom of God. He will not succeed. Let's pray that God will help us. Whatever it is that is not a, a part of the, the, the life of a Christian, don't do it. 
whatever amusement you know we have learned today about what's the amusement whatever is uh, uh, part of what the amusement do not be a part of it don't partake in it ask the lord to help you he will help you if any man be in christ he is a new creature all things have passed away all things have become new as you have become a new creature all things should pass away from your lives the things you are doing before should not be done again. The things I did before, I do before, I did before, I do them no more. The places I went before, I go there no more. The things I wore, I wore before, I wear them no more. The kind of music I listened before, to before, I listen to them no more. The kind of films I watch them no more. The kind of clothes I wore before, I wear them no more. A Christian should be different now. Things must be different now. Things should be different now for every child of God. Our lives will conform fully to that of Christ. What Christ will not do, don't do it. Where Christ will not go, don't go there. The things that Christ will not put on if he was here, don't put them on. We should conform to the life of Christ. Nothing more, nothing less, and nothing else. If we live like Christ, there is nothing else to add. Let's pray that God will help us and make us be just like Christ. Even though worldly amusement surrounds us and abound today, we must not uh, uh, be part of them. We must be compared to be like Christ. We are to remain in the world but not conform to the, their lifestyle. Let's pray that God will help every one of us. God will deliver us from the present evil world. Satan has desired to have you, brother, sister, Satan has desired to have you and sift you as wheat. But you have to deliver yourself, cry for deliverance. He has prayed for us that our strength will not fail. You will need to ask that the Lord will strengthen you and cut you off. May God deliver us from the plans of the devil. Every amusement the devil throws at you is a bait. It's a trap to catch you and eventually draw you back. You don't know, brother, that Satan is, that Satan is after you. He has always been. He says he, he moves up and down uh, the earth looking for whom to devour. He is still doing it. And it comes in various ways. One of the ways is that worldly amusement and entertainment. In many churches today, he has got them. He will not get us in deeper life. Many churches today are places of entertainment. Not the word of God. Dancing and the... Uh, uh, singing and all that which do not uh, uh, glorify God he will not succeed in doing that here in our church we will stand and remain as true Christians the amusements of the world are not to be practiced by the Christian Christ himself cannot practice them and neither should we. We must hate what he hates, love what he loves, win souls like he, like he did, and do all that he approves. He resisted temptations of the devil, and so we should. Let's ask that the Lord will help us. The Lord will assist us to overcome every temptation to go back to the enjoyments that we left behind. When you are born again, your heart changes, your desires change. You turn your attention to the things of God. You turn your, your attention to the uh, kingdom of God and you concentrate on heavenly things. The Bible says we set our affections uh, on things above and not on the things on the earth. Your attention should be set on the things above and not on the things on the earth. The Lord will grant us comprehensive deliverance. The Lord will grant us comprehensive deliverance from every form of corruption. It will deliver you. It will deliver me. His grace will be upon our lives. Let us go back to the old time way. 
the old time deeper life. The old time deeper life. Let's go back to it. The Lord will help you. The Lord will help me. What we are known for before, the, uh, deeper life people, we are known to be serious, committed people. Totally different from the people of the world. We must not blend. We must not mix up with the people of the world. How do you spend your time when you come back after work? What do you do? What do you spend the time to do when you come back from work? Even when you come back from your Bible, from the uh, uh, evening meetings, Bible studies, Thursday revival, what do you do? How do you spend your time? Do you just sit down before the television, you tune to one station, you, you begin to watch one football match, one sporting event? Is that how we spend our time now? Our children, what do we do with them? We, we have bought DSTV for them. As we, go, uh, we, as we go out, we leave them with the DSTV and they can watch whatever they want. Is that how we are, we are bringing them up? How do we spend our time and how have we been training our children to spend their time? Let us pray that God will help every one of us. That our homes will not be homes of worldly entertainment. People that are looking for the latest home videos, they will come and ask, neighbor, do you have so and so film? And you will give them because you are up to date in the world. God forbid. The Lord will help us. We will be different from the people of the world. We will not conform by the grace of God. We will not conform to what the people of the world are doing. Our lives will be different. Our families will be different. Our businesses will be different. Our entertainments, our appearance, our clothing will be different from what they, are, they have in the world. We should make conscious effort to be different from the people of the world. Conscious effort. Never, you, uh, never uh, try to adjust and to blend with the people of the world. Jesus says we should come out from among them and be separate. And God will help us to come out from among them and be separate. Open your mouth and pray. That the Lord will help you. The Lord will assist you. We should know what is proper and always do it. We must not be entangled again with the things that we left behind. These are the things we left behind after we became born again, after we gave our lives to Christ. We must not go back to them. The Lord is going to help us. As Christians, we must remain unspotted from the world. Where do we stand today? Let's pray that God will really help us to clean up our lives. Whatever has come in that ought not to be there, the Lord will help us to jettison them and put things in order in our lives. Today, we have the opportunity. Nobody knows when the Lord will come. We don't know. We don't know when the Lord will come. But let's pray that the Lord he will help us, He will assist us. That whenever He comes, we will be ready to go with Him. That nothing will condemn us on the last day. The things we do, the things we eat, the things we wear, nothing will condemn us on the last day. Let's pray. Even giving ourselves over to, the, to, to uh, advancements in the world, we should be careful that they don't distract us. Let's pray that God will help us to remain focused on the, on the calling of Christ upon our lives. Things must be different now in our lives as we have come out of the world. 
God has taken us away from what is going on in the world and we must not go back there. Even today that the entertainment industry is booming, now for the unbelievers, it is not for the believers. Things must be different now for all of us who are true believers. We want to pray that God will help us. We will live clearly distinct life from the people of the world. We will not, we will not get involved or get engaged in what they have been doing or what they are still doing. Our life will be different now. Since all things have passed away, uh, 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 since we become born again, and all things have passed away, all things must become new in every area of our lives. We should not forget that. We should not forget that a Christian must be different from the world. We are to be like Christ. We must not forget that. And as, as the, uh, the name of the Christian begins with Christ, so should Christ start and dominate the Christian life. Without Christ, we are nothing. All that will remain is nothing if we remove Christ. And so, we must put on Christ and live as he wants us to live and focus on him and turn our backs to the world and to the things of the world. How are you living today? How is your life today? Let's pray that the Lord will assist us. The grace of God will enable us to live as God expects us to do. Let's give our time to the things that matter. There's so much to be done in the kingdom of God that we shouldn't have time for the uh, amusements and entertainment. That is an evidence of not being involved in what is going on in the kingdom. So much to do. So much prayers to pray. So much things to plan. So much outing to, outing to do. So much to do in the kingdom. When do we have time for the amusements of the world? Let's pray that God will help us to use our time profitably for him. How can a Christian come back from work and for two hours you are watching home video? What kind of, how, how, does it mean that there is nothing for you to do in the kingdom? No assignments? And the church needs prayers. We need prayers. There are so much prayers to be done. We can invest our time in prayer. Invest our time in studying the word of God. And become, so that we can become mighty in the world. There is so much that we can do with our time. And the uh, Blo uh, uh, block out all these uh, amusements that the devil is bringing in as a way, br bringing in as a way of stealing our time. Let's ask God the Lord, the Lord to help us. We will begin to use our times profitably. Many times we have pro programs. There's no follow-up. The converts are they're supposed to come in. Nobody follows them up. What are we doing? We can invest our time in follow-up, in evangelism, in prayer, in intercession. In studying the world, so much we can do that we shouldn't even have time to mention what the entertainment and amusements. God will help us to reorganize our lives and then put things in order in our lives. Let's pray. Every, in every area we have wasted time, the Lord will help us to readjust and turn our time to things that are profitable, that, are, that, are, uh, that will bring blessings upon our lives as well as upon the church of God. If we pray, the Lord will help us. And as we also go back, we uh, pass on the same information to our, our members and challenge them on how they spend their times. And not just uh, the members, but their children as well. What they, they, they expose their children to. Those who have bought the uh, amusement uh, equipment for their children that will keep them busy while they are out, they should look at it, back, look at it again and do something about it. The Lord will help us and cleanse the church. The Lord will help us and uh, uh, deliver us from all these uh, entertainments and, uh, and, and even sports and uh, fashions that gradually, gradually is coming back into the church like, it, nev like it, it never was before in the past.
if you are finding it difficult to, uh, to uh, forsake this entertainment and, and uh, worldly amusement, it shows that something is wrong internally. And you need to pray that God will help you and solve your internal spiritual problem. A real child of God enjoys the things of God and never enjoys the things of the devil and the things of the world. You hate them. You detest them. If your heart is right, you can't enjoy the things. How can that happen? But when you, something is wrong somewhere and your feet is almost gone, that is when you begin to enjoy the things that the people of the world are enjoying. Let's pray that God will help us and whatever needs to be done in our lives and our hearts, the Lord the God himself will do it for us. He will walk upon our hearts and restore us to where we ought to be, where we used to be. That the love of God, the desire for the things of God will come back in our lives. The hunger for righteousness, the, the longing to read the Bible, the desire for the burden for prayer, the zeal for evangelism and follow-up, it will come back into our lives and replace this, all, all these other things that have gradually crept in. So that by the grace of God, our lives will be enriched on a daily basis. If all uh, worldly amusements uh, destroys the life, it destroys our hearts. But when we give ourselves to prayer, to studying the word of God, to meditation, and to, uh, to uh, reaching out to sin for, uh, evangelism and, and follow up, those are the things that will build us up and help us to remain Christians. So that we will remain as God wants us to remain till the end. The Lord is going to help us. We are going to change our pattern of life, the things we do, by the grace of God. And from today, things are going to be different. By the grace of God, we are going to change our, the pattern of our life and ensure that we don't continue doing what will destroy, obviously destroy our Christian life. Let's ask uh, God to help us. He will. As workers and leaders, what we should be doing now is devoting time to build, up our, build ourselves up in the grace and power of God. The world is waiting for, for prepared men and women to reach out to them. And what we should be doing is praying and seeking the face of God for His anointing and power to go out and reach the unreached. And, this, and they share the word of God. We cannot be tied down at home We're watching videos and listening to the deadly music when we can prepare ourselves and go out and meet the, the yearning needs of the people. The Bible says that the, 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 the world uh, is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Let's prepare and put ourselves in order and go out. It will not happen if we are just at home and enjoying uh, this uh, music and watching that video. Those things will run us down. But as we seek the face of God, as we pray, as we read the Bible, and the, the grace of God, the power of God, anointing comes upon us, when we go out, things will begin to happen. The people will bow as we preach. And they will yield and surrender. Our poopies will be fiery. And the people that listen to us will want to do what God wants them to do. Let's pray that the time we have now, we will use it to develop ourselves spiritually. So that the grace and power of God will flow into our lives and they energize us to do the work that God has God called us to do. That is what we should be spending our time to do now. Self-development, building up ourselves, seeking the face of God. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. We need to wait upon God at this time and renew our strength so that the work God has called us to do in these last days, by His grace, we will be able to do it and do it successfully. And there's so much to be done. Look at all the assignments waiting for us now, that we, all the things we have to carry out, and we need the power of God, we need the grace of God, we need time. Let's pray that God will help us and prepare us Very soon we'll start preparing for the, uh, for the December retreat, for the Congress. We need to begin to put our lives in order so that God can use us as instruments in His hands. These are things we should start to pray about, start to plan for, start to work on. We have so many converts that we won in the past that are yet to be followed up. We don't see them in the churches because many of us are not following them up. Let's pray that God will help us to divert our attention and our time to the, the things that will bring spiritual benefits into the church. What are you doing with your time? 
how do you spend your time on a daily basis? Surely you can spend it better in, uh, in doing the things that uh, will, uh, will uh, elevate the, the kingdom of God. Instead of just staying at home, you are watching this one and reading that one and viewing that one. All, things, all the things that will instead bring you down spiritually. The Lord will help us. If there is anything we will take away from this meeting tonight, let it be a resolve to make a proper use of our, of, our, of our time in developing ourselves for greater service and then abandoning every time-wasting and time-killing uh, activity that has come into our lives. Some people kill time. They kill time. The time that is not enough to do so many things. Some are killing their time because with this worldly amusement. Let's pray that God will help us that we will, not, we will stop killing our time, but we will start using them for things that will profit the kingdom of God as well as ourselves. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we thank you for your word that we have had today. Reminding us of the things we have forgotten. And uh, call, calling our, our memory back to the, what we ought to be doing. Father, we pray. As we have had today, Lord, you will help us to go back and put things in order in our lives in Jesus' name. We are going to forsake every form of worldly amusement that has come into our lives. Every form of worldly amusement that has come into our families. We are going to jettison them in Jesus' name. Amen. Henceforth, Lord, we are going to use our time for things that matter. To, de to develop ourselves, to pray, to uh, uh, evangelize, to follow up, to do things that matter for the kingdom of God. Father, we pray as we turn, a, we turn, back from the, uh, turn our backs to these amusements, we will begin to use our times profitably for the kingdom of God in Jesus' name. Amen. Everything we have acquired in the house for engaging in these amusements, you will direct us on how to dispose all of them. Amen. So that they will not remain a temptation to us in our houses in Jesus' name. Amen. The devil is planning against, has planned against many people that they will not get to heaven. But he will not succeed. Amen. We will get to heaven in Jesus' name. Amen. And every avenue through which the devil is, is targeting us, Father, we pray tonight, it will fail in Jesus' name. Amen. We are not ignorant of the devil's devices. And we are not are going to allow him to destroy our spiritual life and destroy, destroy our eternal future. Father, we pray, as we have heard the word of God today, we will take decisive action and correct things in our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You will cleanse the church the power of God will come back to the church. As we begin to seek your face, begin to study your word, begin to wait upon you, the power of, of, of the Lord will descend upon the church again in Jesus' name. You will help us and our families. You will help us and our children. As we turn our backs upon these things also, we will make our children to turn their backs upon them as well in Jesus' name. We're asking that as you deliver us from all these um, evil, evils of uh, the world and uh, amusements, Lord, they will never come back to our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. All the distractions of the devil, Lord, Lord God, they will be taken away from us in Jesus' name. We well, thank you so much for hearing us. In Jesus' name we we'll pray. Amen. And everybody said, I pray there will be a mighty change in every life and every family in Jesus' name. Yeah. Everything we have heard, we are going to practice. Yeah. We say no to worldly amusement. Yeah. Somebody there say no. no. To worldly advancement, somebody say there no. no. And then to worldly ambition, everybody what do we say?
and then to the great commission. Yeah. Winning souls. Yeah. Be like Jesus. Yeah. Like compelled to be like Jesus in everything. And I say, yeah. yes. Be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. I'm revived. I said I'm revived. You go back home with that revival and every church, every local church will taste that revival in Jesus' name. It will begin with me. God bless you.